America is a maritime nation. With 75% of the Earth's surface covered by water, and with hundreds of billions of dollars of the U.S. economy dependent on the global trade that transits the sea, the United States requires a significant naval expeditionary advantage. Today, the U.S. maintains that advantage, but our competitors' accelerated investment in their expeditionary warfare capabilities and capacity has eroded the gap. The People's Republic of China is building up its naval fleet at a rapid pace. It's an on pace to have over 400 naval warships by 2030. Marines and sailors operating from forward postured amphibious warfare ships can be rapidly deployed to a wide range of contingencies when called upon, providing both deterrence and access in response to crisis or conflict. Air Force 155. Separately, a U.S. defense official says the 26th Marine Expeditionary Unit and its 2,000 Marines and sailors is moving closer to Israel via the Red Sea. The unit is a special operations capable Marine Rapid Response Force. Amphibious warfare ships are the cornerstone of the Navy Marine Corps Global Maritime Crisis Response Force. They are pivotal in our nation's ability to deter aggression, reassure our allies and partners, maintain freedom of navigation and access to key global shipping lanes that are the economic lifelines for many countries. Secretary of Defense sending Marines and more warships to the Middle East after Iran's attempt to seize two oil tankers in international waters. The Amphibious Ready Group Marine Expeditionary Unit provides combatant commanders a range of capabilities in every domain. The ARGMU serves as a forward deployed, flexible, sea based expeditionary force providing credible deterrence and decision space for the President and Secretary of Defense. And the Secretary of Defense has ordered the deployment of what is called an Amphibious Readiness Group Marine Expeditionary Unit to the CENTCOM area of responsibility. Now, what that involves is additional aviation, maritime assets, and Marines, as you mentioned. The nation requires modern and ready amphibious warfare ships and ship-to-shore connectors. This ship and the Marines on board are here to deal with whatever crisis may unfold, not only as a deterrent, but ready to act if called upon. This naval force can transition and operate across the spectrum of conflict, able to rapidly shift from cooperation to competition to conflict. The Navy Marine Corps team will launch a new ship for mobility and maneuver. The Future Medium Landing Ship, or LSM, will move and sustain distributed Marine stand-in forces in the littorals without the need for ports or runways. Marines are working today with an experimental stern landing vessel to refine tactics, techniques, and procedures to employ these ships in support of quick reacting stand-in forces. The information warfare environment extends to the sea. ARG News are ideal information warfare platforms for the 21st century, providing extensive C5I capabilities for our nation's leaders. Operating from key locations linked to the fleet battle force network allows Marines to better support the fleet and joint force efforts to deter adversaries, coordinate complex operations, or act in conflict. Additionally, to maintain the ability to respond to global crises, the Marine Corps is developing a global positioning network to create a combination of afloat and ashore distribution nodes to disperse supplies and equipment forward to sustain naval expeditionary combat forces. The afloat component of the GPN, known as MPF Next Generation, will provide forward postured sustainment aboard ships, aligned to the regional needs of our forces with global mobility while being resilient. Partnering with Congress and industry is critical to maintaining our naval expeditionary dominance. Steady funding provides the predictability and stability required to maintain and grow our amphibious fleet at scale. In order to sustain a strategic maritime advantage, the Navy and Marine Corps require contracted multi-ship block procurements of amphibious warfare ships. This would require purchases over a 10-year period of five amphibious transport docks, alongside two amphibious assault ships. Combined, these seven ships will require an investment of approximately $18 billion, less than 8% of the total shipbuilding budget over a decade. 
America's strength in naval expeditionary warfare is a strategic advantage we must retain.